Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We'll have the latest on the devastating drought conditions in California and explain what ranchers can do to get help. Plus, how beef producers can manage their risk of BRD. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. Topping our show this week, California's devastating drought continues to take a toll on the state's beef industry as cattle ranchers are having to shell out thousands of dollars to feed their herds. Although the state saw some recent rain, it did little to put a dent in the months-long drought that has the region thirsting for more. According to the U.S. Drought Monitor, around 90% of California is in severe drought and close to 70% in extreme drought. In addition, U.S. Department of Agriculture data shows that California's beef cow herd was at 600,000 head as of January 1st. That's down 1.6% from just a year earlier. That number could continue to drop as ranchers are forced to cut their herds. We asked a couple of California cattle producers about the challenges they face trying to feed during this difficult time. We're feeding hay today because it's not raining. Uh, we're here in Sonoma County, Northern California, and uh, for us, we're in, a, I think, our fourth year of real dry weather. Uh, we're on a ranch here that we lease in Petaluma. Normally, uh, we come on here in uh, November. There's grass here to turn the cows out on, and we don't feed hay. Uh, typically, we get 35 to 45 inches of rain, and we can pasture our cattle year-round without uh, having to feed much hay. And unfortunately, with the weather conditions the way they are today, uh, we're in a severe drought and uh, we're having to feed cattle instead of just checking them. Oh, I have to tell you, the drought in California is just devastating. It is so difficult to drive down the road and see no grass, see cows without grass. Uh, my husband and I, we've been buying feed all winter. Um, our feed bills are skyrocketing. We've been looking for grass in other parts of the country and fortunately we've been able to find some and been able to truck cattle out. But I'll tell you, I have lots of friends and neighbors that are selling cows. I mean, they are selling their the main herd, their main cattle herd, and that's, it makes me cry. It is so sad to see us lose those good genetics of our cow herd. We're praying for rain. Um, I'm seeing the impact for the cattle industry in California. It will be significant, mostly because the drought is through the whole state. It's not just one spot in California. The whole state is being impacted by the severe drought. Joining us now in the studio with more on the drought is Jim Robb, director of the Livestock Marketing Information Center. Jim, we've heard a lot about the drought this winter throughout California, but recently they've received some rain. Uh, what is your perspective on what the moisture picture looks like, and more importantly, what does it mean for the market? Well, most recently, the rains have probably been most beneficial to the states north and surrounding California. Mm -hmm. California's in a Mediterranean climate, so they depend on that winter rain in December, January, February. These rains have come a little bit late, but they'll be beneficial somewhat to the state. Always in California in those droughts, the cow-calf sector and the stockers are the first impact because they're dependent on those coastal and foothill grazing lands. And then it sort of evolves into water availability reservoirs. We get in later in the year and we're gonna have some crop issues, irrigated pasture issues, et cetera, especially in California. We've already seen placements increase in feedlots in the U.S. because of the drought in California. I think we saw that especially in the January data. Very good. And uh, in terms of uh, weather-related issues, California is not the only state that has had some challenges this winter. Uh, tell us uh, how that's impacted the market across the United States. Well, I think in the cattle feeding sector, we've had some difficulties with the very cold weather, some areas just feeding cattle. Mm -hmm. In cow-calf country across the U.S., we've fed a lot of hay this year, very cold weather. So we really depleted our hay stocks, which were rather tight going into this year. And then importantly, in the Southern Plains, we've had that additional hay feeding. We had our, our small grain pastures, the wheat pastures, really turn off very early, really in January. Those pastures didn't get well established, and then we got the very cold temperatures, so those cattle also have already been placed into feedlots. So the weather has had some major impacts. Well, I'm interested in following up on, on the point you made relative to feed. So, so what do, are your projections in terms of, of hay and feed costs moving forward? And also, what are your projections uh, relative to uh, the, the cattle markets as we move into the spring? 
Well, I think it, especially on the hay market side, uh, the California dairies and the California situation will be a big pull. California has about 1.8 million head of dairy cows, largest in the United States. Dairy is rather profitable, and the cow-calf sector. So we'll see hay moving this year, probably from as far east as maybe Kansas, all the way to pulled into the California marketplace. So the hay market could be very sensitive, very volatile, and there's going to be a lot of demand to move hay around the country. Prices are going to reflect that. Then in terms of you know, the overall market impacts, we placed cattle earlier, so they're going to move through the feedlots a little differently. Um, but I think longer term context is many of these cows in California will find a home in other states. They really won't be liquidated. But it may be a bit of a headwind, depending on how this drought develops, in terms of the overall pace that the U.S. cow herd is sort of starting to rebuild their cow herd might have a little bit of a headwind due to the drought out west. And, and as you think about the consumer implications of this, uh, consumers have faced some challenges given uh, the overall market environment. Tell us more about your perspective uh, relative to consumer markets. Consumer markets have also been impacted by the weather. We've had a really cold, in fact, almost a record cold uh, winter from Chicago down to Atlanta up the eastern coast of the U.S. So we've seen the consumer, in fact, the economic debate really in the overall economy is how much has the weather really dampened the U.S. economy growth-wise or was some, some of this economic slowdown really related to bigger problems? We think it's mostly been related to the weather. If that's the case, then as we get into better weather, we should have maybe some improvement in the consumer demand profile. That will hopefully spell over into the beef complex. Well, I want you to take a look into your longer-term crystal ball and tell us uh, what do you see in the future as uh, for, for both the, uh, the, the, the beef market as, as well as the marketplace in general? Well, I think, again, as the economy... The U.S. economy is the key. As we look kind of in the global business cycle, the last business cycle, some of these developing countries led the way, China, Brazil. The U.S. is leading this business cycle. So as the U.S. economy gonna, goes, it's going to be Im impacting the beef market. But also importantly, we need to look sort of around the world. Australia's had a major drought, too. And there's, they may be coming out of that. They, they've had two years of herd liquidation. Maybe we'll have a little bit less competition overseas from Australia and a little bit less competition as those compete with cow beef in the U.S. market. We're watching Mexico really closely, too, from a demand perspective. U.S. economy grows. Maybe the Mexican economy will grow, and that'll help our beef exports to Mexico. So the weather and the economic growth rates, I think, are sort of intertwined at this point in time. I think longer term, though, the rate of growth of the U.S. economy is going to be the key to the demand side in the beef complex. Complex. Very good. Well, thank you again for your perspective. We really appreciate it. It's been my pleasure. Remember, there are ways to get help. The U.S. Department of Agriculture is one government agency working with producers to address the current West Coast drought. For more information, visit the website usda.gov forward slash drought. There you'll find detailed information on how to receive assistance. It's one thing to join an organization. It's another to take the reins and lead it. That's exactly what Bob McCann is doing as the 2014 president of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. And he's encouraging his fellow NCBA members to get involved and make their voices heard. Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter Brad Bulla has more. In South Texas, Bob McCann grew up in a ranching family. And most days, he'd like nothing better than to stay in the saddle on the ranch. But as president of NCBA, McCann prizes not only his independence, but also the value of cattlemen from around the nation joining together to tackle common issues. I think cattlemen probably uniquely, uh, most cattlemen are pretty well in charge of their own destiny. And that's something that's always been important to me. And, uh, you know, I, that, that's another reason why I think NCBA is a wonderful organization for cattlemen. Uh, it helps get the information out uh, to a lot of our members. Uh, it, it provides a lot of assistance to our members uh, and things that they need to know. McCann says NCBA members place high importance on the work the organization does in Washington day in and day out, helping to defend the beef cattle industry and build a better business climate for cattlemen. But he notes it makes a big impact on legislators when, each spring, Cattle men and women head to Capitol Hill during NCBA's legislative conference. I think they sit up and pay a lot more of attention if there's an actual producer in the room and actually telling them about, uh, about real life issues that they're having with their business, with their industry. And uh, they'll, they'll sit up and pay attention to a constituent. So uh, I think it's always going to be important that uh, our producers uh, maintain an identity on the Hill 
and uh, try to get up to our to our DC meetings and and uh, go and, and visit with their representatives, legislators. From South Texas, I'm Brad Bullifor, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. This year's NCBA Legislative Conference is just about one month away. Join NCBA and you can attend the conference, which is set for April 8th through the 10th in Washington, D.C. You can find out more and register online at the website beefusa.org. Still ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. If you're feeding cattle, you're feeding them to make a profit. And to make a profit, you've got to get that critter gaining. Got to be eating all the time. See what cattle producers can do to help manage their risk for BRD. Plus, a closer look at one award-winning family operation in West Texas. Don't go away. We'll be right back. You're watching NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen on RFD-TV. This isn't a job. It's a calling. Your hard work helps feed the world. Being linked to those who care for the land is our calling. For more than 175 years, John Deere has been a proud partner of the cattle business. That's why we bring you special NCBA member discounts, so you can get the right equipment. Strong, rugged, versatile, and ready to work hard. Talk to your John Deere dealer to learn more about your NCBA member discounts. John Deere, committed to the land, committed to your success. Celebrate American agriculture at the 2014 National Ag Day. It's March 25th in Washington, D.C. With 365 sunrises and 7 billion mouths to feed, this event honors the contributions of American agriculture to the world. I am optimistic about the future of agriculture. Doubling production is what we're going to have to do by 2050. I have no doubt of what we can do this. To learn more, visit agday.org. Welcome back. Shipping fever, bronchial pneumonia, bovine respiratory disease, whatever term you're most familiar with, the problem is still the same. BRD can spread fast and it can cost beef producers as much as $900 million per year. We learn more about ways to win the battle against BRD as Brian Baxter reports from Western Iowa. It's a snowy, freezing morning in western Iowa, and Ron Vogel is checking on his feeder calves. Like producers across most of the country, this has been a tough winter for Ron, but he has long experience in caring for his animals and ensuring they stay healthy. Basically, I've been feeding cattle all my life. I was born and raised on this farm, lived here most of the time. If you're feeding cattle, you're feeding to make a profit, and to make a profit, you've got to get that critter gaining got to be eating all the time. You can't be standing around the yard doing nothing or breathing heavy or or coughing and that, you know, and just standing there. They got to be eating. That's the name of the game. You aren't, you aren't going to keep them healthy if they don't eat. Ron sources his animals from Montana and trucks them more than a thousand miles to Iowa. That trip can be stressful, so to keep the calves healthy, he works closely with his veterinarian, Tom Ulrichson, to precondition and vaccinate his calves. To me, you just feel more relaxed feeding cattle if you got a competent veterinarian that you can contact and converse with, you know, and, and it's just, I just had a, uh, a good relationship with Tom and the rest of the crew in there. It's just so much easier after you've uh, rode a thousand miles with cattle all night long. It's, it's nice to sit down and relax, you know. He's a, been a great producer. He goes out there, sees the cattle, brings them back, and uh, we always run them through our clinic here at the, at the uh, through our chute, and he gets them vaccinated. Uh, a couple years ago, he brought a group in, and we had that weather change, and. Uh, he had some sick cattle out there, and so I used Zactran on those cattle, and they responded real well, and so he's been a big Zactran fan ever since. Uh, he usually doesn't have much trouble with cattle, but he's always got a bottle of Zactran on hand and in case he gets one or two that's feeling a little punk some morning, and, and uh, so it's worked great for him. 
This kind of year with record snow and cold and the rapid swing in temperatures can be especially hard on long-haul calves that may already be at higher risk for bovine respiratory disease or BRD. Obviously, once they get them in and get them weaned, the weather changes, uh, gets a little rough, you're going to see some BRD and we've had a lot of that this year because of the change in the temperatures. Uh, we've had a fairly dry winter but temperatures have been 40 one day and three days later it might be minus seven below zero and it's been a lot of uh, a lot of challenge for those calves out there so again with the prevention with the preconditioned program the shots in them and then uh, we if we do run into problem uh, we go in and, and vaccinate because BRD can cost a producer so much money either in death loss or lost weight gain, it pays to stay ahead of the disease. A key step in beating BRD is to keep a close eye on how the calves look and behave every day. I look at the eyes. If they're bright out of the eyes, you know, you can just about tell bloodshot eyes, you know, and, and when they really get bad, then you got the old ear drop down. And if they're laying around, my policy is, if they don't come up and eat, I watch them real close and I think they might be just off or aren't feeling good then, I let it go to the next feeding. And then I definitely, I'll treat them. Early detection is the key. The sooner you get them, the, lot, the better results you're gonna have. And we do see guys that have missed them or they've treated and then uh, they're not responding, so they call us in. We've had real good luck with Zactran. Most of the pneumonias that we're seeing are bacterial, and they, there might be a combination, but with the vaccines we have, uh, we're seeing more of a bacterial pneumonia or a mycoplasma pneumonia. And so we've got to have a drug that will treat those. And for me, we're seeing an increase of mycoplasma, and that's the nice thing about Zactran, it'll treat both, and it's labeled for both. So uh, when I come in with an animal, I don't, I'm just treating, I have nothing to go on, and yet I know from past history that I'm probably, if I send a sample of those lungs in, I'm going to find a, a mycoplasma in addition to a pasteurella or a manheimia, hemolytica. I can come with Zactran. In fact, when BRD shows up in an animal, Dr. Ulrichsen has become a believer in using the one-shot power of Zactran to deliver a cost-effective, rapid response. The nice thing about Zactran, a uh, couple things. Uh, first of all, it, there's a real kick up front. It, it really hammers that bug hard. So you'll see results within the first 24 hours. They'll go back to eating sooner than they ever did before. Usually uh, I'll give uh, an animal a shot, say in the morning here, and they'll be up to the bunk eating right away. The other nice thing about Zactran, it's 10 days treatment. Uh, so you give one shot, you don't have to touch the animal, run him in the chute again, stress him out again, uh, giving uh, two and three sets of shots. So one shot, 10 days, uh, gives a real good kick up front, very strong antibiotic, and uh, most of the time I give it one shot of Zactran and we don't have to worry about him again. That's what Tom suggested here several years ago when it came out. I said, what do you got that works better than what we have been? And that's it, Zactran. Both Ron Vogel and Dr. Ulrichsen have decades of experience in working with and caring for cattle. So they know that preconditioning, keeping a close eye on calves, ensuring they have all the water and feed they need, and minimizing stress are all keys to preventing BRD. But they also know that a product like Zactran, once proven, delivers real value. When Zactran came out a couple years ago, I was a little bit hesitant and I kind of let other people try them. But my first uh, big experience with Zactran was uh, a client that called me, he had 120 head of cattle that he brought in a couple weeks before. Uh, they had gotten sick, he'd used several different products on them. He had six deads on a Saturday morning when he called me. I went out there, uh, posted them, looked like uh, pastorella. I said, there's only one left that I'm going to use and that's going to be Zactran. The cattle the next morning were up eating and uh, they took off after that. So I've been a big cheerleader for Zactran ever since. In Western Iowa, I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Here's some important safety information. For use in cattle only, do not treat cattle within 35 days of slaughter. Because a discard time in milk has not been established, do not use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older or in calves to be processed for veal. The effects of Zactran on bovine reproductive performance, pregnancy, and lactation have not been determined.
Fighting and winning the battle against BRD is essential to protecting the bottom line for your beef operation. To learn more about exactly why you should consider Zactran and do a cost comparison, visit the website zactran.com. We'll have more right after this. There's something wrong. His head is down. He's clearly stressed. He's worried sick about BRD. That's why there's prescription Zactran for BRD treatment and control in high-risk cattle. Get a rapid response plus 10-day treatment and control in a single dose so you can stop worrying and get back to business. For use in cattle only, do not treat cattle within 35 days of slaughter. Because a discard time in milk has not been established, do not use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older or in calves to be processed for veal. The effects of Zactran on bovine reproductive performance, pregnancy, and lactation have not been determined. Don't worry yourself sick. Talk to your veterinarian about a real alternative for BRD treatment and control. Because it's critical, it's Zactran. From Marielle, a leading animal health company. Well, I think a rancher has to be a steward of the land. There's nobody else that can take care of land better than a rancher. When we switched over to the Perina products, it was a step in the right direction. The difference we see in the cattle is the consistency of their nutrition. The cattle hold their condition a lot better throughout the whole year. It does make a difference that we can see, day in and day out. Welcome back to Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Auctioner. Each year, the National Golden Spur Award recognizes outstanding contributions to the ranching and livestock industry. The 2013 winner is John Means, a former president of the Texas and Southwestern Cattle Raisers Association. Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter Scott Hoke brings us a closer look at this award-winning operation. Nestled in the mountains of far west Texas, the Means Ranch Company is a family-owned cow-calf operation that traces its roots back to 1884. John Means and his wife Jackie are the fifth generation to live and work in this part of the Lone Star State. Although the Means family used to raise Highland Herefords, Angus has been the ranch's breed of choice for 60 plus years. We've just uh, kind of tried to make a living for a long time ranching here in the desert. And that's basically what we do. I mean, you don't see wind towers, you don't see oil wells. It's, uh, it's been a ranching operation. The Means family first ventured into West Texas with a small herd of cattle in the early 1880s. It took them two tries. The first time, John's great-grandfather was greeted by a tribe of Comanches who offered an interesting trade. They would spare his life if he would hand over the cattle. And he's, you know, of course, gave him the cattle and they turned around and went home with nothing and, and started over, got a second herd and that time came with his uh, sister and uh, brother-in-law and their children and the two families made it all the way to the Davis Mountains. But uh, Gramp, as he was known, was supposed to have famously said, it's the easiest decision I've made in my life. <laughs> then my grandfather started here after my great-grandfather and he passed away in 61. Then my father was here basically running the operation. He passed away in 74, and then I have been here ever since, Jack and myself, for the majority of those years. With the constant threat of drought, John says ranching in West Texas is an art, not a science. Protecting what previous generations of means men and women put together has always been a priority, and John knows being a steward of the land is key to success. The cattle go hand in hand with everything you do. You know, you're more prone to wildfire. Your grasslands aren't as healthy if they're not grazed and trampled. It's, it's all a process of nature. And when you take the cow out, you've taken everything out. And plus, I think more importantly, or as importantly, I don't think we can sustain these large acreages that we're fortunate still to have in West Texas if we don't have cattle. 
John told me when I, when I was engaged to him that he really felt that he was the steward of this land. He said, it's not mine, it's, I'm a steward. And, and I, the one thing I want to do is turn it over in better shape to my children than I received it. And what I'm really proud of John is that he's kind of like, you know, nothing I do is cast in stone. I'm all about innovation, so any ideas that you have, let's try them. And, uh, and it's been fun to see. Truly, if I believe anything, I believe we were put here to be stewards, period of the land, livestock, our families, everybody. You know, that, that's, that's my, probably my most uh, profound belief. John's passion for the beef industry is easy to see. In 2007, he was elected president of the Texas and Southwestern Cattle Raisers Association, where he played a key role in protecting the interests of his fellow ranchers. He also serves on the board of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association and is a member of many other organizations. It's been huge for me and for Jackie and for our family to be able to represent the industry and we don't take that lightly. I know Jackie and I don't and uh, I hope that we've been able to make a difference in a small way because it's truly been a passion for us to serve and. It's just been an extraordinary thing to be able to meet so many fine people. And there's not any finer people in the world than the cow people. And uh, to be associated with them and to be able to represent them has been a, a huge honor to me. For John, raising cattle is more than a business. It's a way of life. Not only does he want to be profitable, but together John and Jackie work hard to preserve the ranch for future generations, including their children, Lizzie, Coley, and Sarah. Jackie and I have been very fortunate to have raised three really fine children. Continuing with this heritage is, is something I definitely think about, but it's something I'm not put pressure on my kids to do. You know, I want them to do that on their own accord. And I think we're blessed that they want to do so. They all love it. All the kids are involved. All are part owners and like to be involved. And uh, we've been blessed to be able to, to stay in business and to, to make it work financially well enough that we should be able to secure it to the next generation. And yes, it, it has taken a lot of careful management and stewardship of the grass and the cattle and the people and all things in order to make that happen. Absolutely, faith in God has played a big part and we're very blessed to come from, from a Christian family all the way through and I don't think you could, you could stay here if you didn't have a deep faith. You know, it's just, uh, it can be harsh, <laughs> it can be brutal and not that anything else can't be, but yeah, our deep faith in God is, is a big part of our lives. John's faith and his passion for ranching are values he lives out every day. And thanks to his leadership, the Moon Ranch and the Means Ranch Company have not only survived for nearly 120 years, they have thrived. For those reasons and more, this West Texas cattleman is the perfect choice to be the winner of the 2013 Golden Spur Award. I know that he is very humbled and, and probably feels like he's not deserving, but I do think that it is a real honor for our whole family and for um, his, his forebears who really had a vision and have been able to, um, to, to see that vision to fruition. And John says all the time he's been privileged to be able to do what he loves, which is to, which is to ranch. And so I'm really thrilled for him. I guess there was never a time that I didn't know that's what I was gonna do. And I've been blessed to have been able to do that. And it just, I love all, all of it. You know, I love the, the cows, I love the land, I love the grass, I love trying to make improvements, I like projects, just anything you can do on a ranch. I um, mean, it's my life. I mean, I, mean, I love it, that's just, that's just me. <laughs> There are many great reasons to become a member of NCBA, and one of them is the chance to read The National Cattleman. It's the official publication of NCBA and provides timely news and articles about the issues and events affecting the beef industry. And it now includes an online version, which enables you to read the latest issue while you're on the go.
A subscription is included free of charge when you become a member of NCBA. Joining is easy. Just give us a call at 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit us online at beefusa.org. When we come back, we'll bring you a quick and easy beef recipe that you can make at home. Stay with us. This is yours. And so is what grows there. Not theirs or theirs. Yours. You need this to fight this and this to grow more this. Because the more of this you feed them, the less this you spend on that which leaves more of this here. Don't let them take this from you. Chaparral takes care of weeds and brush, and that's that. We don't sit idle, wondering how we're gonna build a better truck. We get out there and walk a mile, thousands of miles, in the footsteps of the guys we build trucks for. The groundbreaking Ram Heavy Duty with 30,000 pounds of towing and 850 pound feet of torque. One of the great things about beef is that beyond steak or hamburger, there's so many different ways to prepare it. And Laura Majors, one of the recipe testers from the Beef Culinary Center, is with us to share a great and satisfying beef recipe. Now, Laura, I see that you've brought us a one-pan beef dish, perfect for dads like me that hate doing dishes. Is that, that right? That's right. My husband loves this because he is the dishwasher in our <laughs> household. And we get busy and we need some things that are simple too. So that's great. this can take you from start to finish in 25 to 30 minutes and then one pan goes into the sink. So it is really quick and easy. That's outstanding, especially with me using paper plates to, to, to eat <laughs> off of. Go. Well, let's get started. <laughs> okay, well, we've, um, in order to save some time, we've already prepared the beef dish to a certain level. Okay. This would be at the point where you're taking the lid off after the noodles have already cooked. So we okay. start with the beef and some mushrooms, sliced mushrooms, okay. and then we add some garlic and some thyme. We make sure that those are cooked to 160 for ground beef. Okay. And then we're going to just add about a cup and a half or four, a can of beef stock. Okay. Uh -huh. and noodles and the noodles are uncooked at this point then you bring it up to a boil put the lid on mm -hmm. and this is what you have in about eight to ten minutes don't cook the noodles separately just throw it all in there that's, that's right that's how how we end up with one pan at the end so we're at the point where you know we all need our vegetables okay. so we're going to add some peas if to you that insist. <laughs> if i insist huh Good. so you want to add your peas to that yeah and some sour cream because oh, that you're going to cook cook with the peas for about two to three minutes. Okay. They, we can use frozen. You can also use fresh. Yes. Add the sour cream, about a half a cup. Okay. Stir that in. Just stir in that. You also want to stir in some Dijon mustard. Oh wow! With that, gives it a beautiful a flavor. Oh, yeah, no kidding. And that mixes with all of your juices that yes. are in the pan. Okay. And that's your dish. That's your full that dish. Simple. It's that simple. And then how long will you cook that? This is, once everything's all blended, mm -hmm. it's done. It's hot and it's wow, done. Wow, ready to serve. That's right. And it looks like we've got a uh, finished product over here. Is that right? We do. We have a finished product. We have it with ground beef on the left. Mm -hmm. And then over here you'll see it with some top sirloin. And that recipe is also as an option uh, on our website. Very, very flexible. Laura, thanks so much for bringing this Absolutely. easy and fast recipe to us. Great. For one dish beef stroganoff and other easy beef recipes, visit the website beefitswhatsfordinner.com. Or you can always find them on our website. That's cattlemantocattlemen.org. Stay with us. We'll have more right after this. To ensure your seeds become strong stands, give your soil the right preparation before you plant. Improve your growing environment with agronomically designed equipment from Case IH, like the new Ecolo Tiger 875 Disc Ripper, engineered to manage tough residues and shatter root-limiting compaction for improved nutrient uptake and better stands with more fully developed plants at harvest. The world of farming is changing. Will you be ready? Learn more at CaseIH.com. 
Tough trailers built for tough country. Big Bend Trailers manufactures a different kind of trailer, one that's built to put up with the rough conditions found on the ranch. Rugged build using heavy gauge powder coated steel and a two by four rectangle tube frame. There's a one inch gap between the side and floor, so there's no place for water or manure to accumulate and rust. Big Bend Trailers are loaded with standard features, a lever action hitch, a three foot escape gate and a middle sorting gate, rhino lining along the front edges and a receiver hitch to tow another trailer, chute or other equipment. Tough and practical, that's Big Bend Trailers, designed and built by a working cattleman. You can rely on and trust Big Bend Trailers for their durability and convenient features. Reasonably priced for any rancher to afford. For a list of dealers and other design features, visit BigBendTrailers.com. Big Bend Trailers, built cattlemen tough. Welcome back. Every day, cattle producers across the country work to improve their herds in order to ensure a more productive, profitable, and sustainable beef industry. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brad Bulla introduces us to one Kansas family that has invested decades in improving the genetics of their herd in an effort to provide consumers with high quality beef. Sand Hill Farms is a family owned and operated Hereford seed stock business managed by Kevin and Vera Schultz. For almost 150 years, the Schultz family has been living on and working this land in South Central Kansas. We have a registered and commercial cow herd of approximately 350 cows. Uh, the crop side of the operation is irrigated and dry land corn, soybeans, and wheat. We have been here since 1867. We actually have the original um, Homestead Act um, document here, and so it's just really cool that we've been here so many years, and I really hope that I'm able to keep that tradition going by coming back here also. The framework of today's cattle program was laid by Kevin's father, Ron, and grandfather, Roy and Ron still plays an active role in the farm today. Kevin and Vera's children, Brooke, Tyler, and Courtney, are the sixth generation to work on the operation. Although Hertford cattle haven't been around from the beginning, the breed has established a permanent place at Sand Hill. Registered Hertford bulls were brought into the program in the mid-1940s, and the registered cow herd was added in the mid-1980s by Kevin and Vera. My grandpa started using uh, polled Hereford bulls back in the 1940s. Through that, Dad and I have maintained that uh, tradition, but making sure that the tradition is, is quality cattle. And um, so we have, Herf have had Hereford cattle on the place for 70 years, I guess. The reason our cattle, our family has maintained and stayed with Hereford cattle um, is because of the traits that we feel they bring to the table, so to speak. We've continued to use them and breed them and make them better because of some of the things like their feed efficiency and their docile attitudes. And um, we just really enjoyed making them better and learning how to breed them. And they are really easy to work with. If you the whole family's in a pan sort and cattle, you don't have to worry about somebody having to climb up the fence to get away from them. So that's one of the good things I'd like people to understand about the Hereford breed. We just like the Hereford white-faced cattle and, and they're a, a breed that can be crossed with other cattle and, and help their cattle too, we feel. So uh, we're here to do what we can to make uh, our cattle better and to help people make their cattle better too. The Schultz family has worked diligently to improve their registered and commercial Hereford cow herds through sound genetics and solid management practices. Armed with today's technology, as well as the previous generation's wisdom, the registered program has continued to improve year after year, which means buyers come back to Sand Hill again and again. We've got customers that uh, range from coast to coast and from the north in Canada to the southern uh, states as well. And our goal is to provide uh, genetics that will improve every segment or offer improvement to the segment of the industry that our customers use their cattle for. 
whether it's the cow-calf commercial program, the stalker feeder operator, the feed yard man, the packer, or ultimately the consumer. And uh, we're trying to raise cattle or need to raise cattle that uh, provide profitability and um, help each segment satisfy what their goals are for their programs. Through hard work, Sandhill Farms has become one of the top Hereford breeders. That kind of success wouldn't be possible if not for the Schultz family's dedication to the health and welfare of the animals. If they're healthy, uh, they're going to grow better, and those all add to the profitability and the eating experience. We go out every morning, and it doesn't matter if it's below zero or if it's 110 degrees outside, we're either feeding the cattle or making sure they have water and everything like that. Sandhill Farms was founded on the principles of sound genetics and solid management practices. And that combination provides a great foundation for future generations to be involved in the business. We enjoy having three generations working together as a family. It is something we can all go out and do together and relate to each other, ask questions of each other and take, value each other's opinion and it is great to have all three generations working towards a similar goal. We love working with the cattle and yes we want to be profitable but we also really enjoy what we do. Some days it might be long, some days it might be cold, but it's just I love working with the cattle no matter how long the day is. At Sandhill Farms I guess our our goals are to continue to improve the cattle, to grow our operation, to provide the opportunity for the next generation to live here, raise their families, and be profitable with the cattle business. It's pretty neat that I'm able to work alongside my grandfather and my father, and then if the Lord willing, we'll continue to be profitable and be able to pass it on to generations to come. From Haviland, Kansas, I'm Brad Bola for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Do you want to join the Schultz family as members of NCBA? It's easy to do. Just call 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit the website beefusa.org. Stick around. Our friend Baxter Black joins us after this quick break. The new Speed Rower Series self-propelled wind rowers are smart for the way you cut hay or swath grain. The Speed Rower gives you superior luxury with the Comfort Ride cab and patented rear axle suspension. Combine this with New Holland's IntelliSteer auto guidance system to maximize operator ease and efficiency. Looking for more speed? New Holland's new high-speed transport option gives you road speeds up to 24 miles an hour, so you spend less time on the road and more time cutting crop. Visit your New Holland dealer to learn more about the complete lineup of New Holland equipment, in addition to all of the benefits available to cattle producers. Glenn's worked his ranch since he was a boy. A lifetime invested raising cattle and crops and caring for the land and producing a product his urban neighbors can enjoy and trust. Well, why does he go that extra mile? So someday someone he loves can carry it on. IMI Global Third Party Verification can be your partner in helping you to market wisely and responsibly in this new world where people care where their food comes from. Real people. Let's face it, you don't think a lot about your trailer hitch. You use it and forget it. We understand, but at B&W, we think about it. Short nights, long hauls, never ending chores. The unthinkable. We think about it all, so you don't have to. B&W. 
trusted. Just bring her on home, the foreman had said. That is, if I found her, of course. In 17 sections of canyons and brush on the back of a nearly broke horse. Well, why he even bothered, I'll never know. That old cow slipped through the gather each year. I think he was hoping that I'd up and quit. To a smart man, it would have been clear, but I saddled up and made for the bluffs. Think like a cow's how I think. The creeks had quit running and most tanks had gone dry. So I figured she'd hunt up a drink. It was hot as a dashboard in Phoenix in June when the Klein Corral tank came in view. I was stripped to the skivvies and knee deep in cool when the cow come a ambling through. Well, whether she jumped the highest rivet as me don't matter cause she broke and run. Well I swung to the seat slinging seaweed and moss thus exposing my hide to the sun. She's picking a path while I'm building the loop. I miss the first five that I throw, but out on the flat on try number six, are you listening? I catch her as she's starting to slow. I lay on a trap. She plops to the ground. I sideline her right front and rear. I figure a soaking will break her to drive, but my catch rope slips off past her ear when all of a sudden my pegging string is loose. She comes off the ground like a rocket. For a second or two, I'm straddle her head, and then she's blowing her snot in my pocket. Well, she might have been tired, but she plowed quite a while using me to turn up the curl. When she finally got tired of smashing me flat, she left me head first in the furrow. Yes. Well, that night at the rancho, I told the foreman, I'd bucked off. The story was cleaner. The renegade cow, he asked kind of snooty. I just told him that I'd never seen her. This is Baxter Black and Chaco from out there. Thanks, Baxter. We always enjoy our visits with you each and every week. Don't go away. We'll have more right after this. Don't miss the 2014 NCBA Legislative Conference in Washington, D.C. It's your opportunity to meet with key congressional and federal agency influencers and to let them know where cattle men and women stand on critical issues that impact the cattle business and our way of life. Make plans to be in Washington, D.C. April 8th through the 10th for the 2014 NCBA Legislative Conference. Together, we can do more. Details at BeefUSA.org. Your herd, your business, your family. You've always protected what matters most so you know how important vaccinations are for healthy cattle. And with Vista vaccines from Merck Animal Health, you know you're covered. No other vaccine works like Vista. Only Vista gives you complete dual action pneumonia protection and complete one dose fetal protection for the entire pregnancy. Protect what matters most. Talk to your veterinarian or animal health supplier about Vista. Welcome back. Every day, those of us in the agriculture industry work hard to produce food to feed the world's growing population. March 25th is National Ag Day, a chance to recognize and celebrate the contributions of agriculture. Well, Ag Day is uh, extremely important because it allows us as an industry to come out and one day really spotlight what we do every day throughout this country to make sure that we can feed all of our citizens and citizens around the world. So it's a great opportunity to really reconnect with our consumer and talk about all the good that farmers and ranchers do each and every day. And I think it's impo important for the policy guys to realize we have to produce enough food, double our food production in the next less than 40 years. Double our food production. So it's appropriate uh, and absolutely necessary that we take, not just today, not just this week, but every day and every week, to thank American farmers ranchers and producers. You'll have a chance to celebrate the beef industry February 2015 in Texas. We'll be in sizzling San Antonio for the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. It'll take place February 4th through the 7th. 
Find out more at the website beefusa.org. It promises to be a can't-miss event. For this week's legacy photos, we're headed to Texas for a closer look at the new NCBA president, Bob McCann's place. Don't forget, you can send us pictures of your farmer ranch by visiting our website, cattlemanthecattleman.org. Include your ranch or farm name and your hometown, and we may use them on a future Cattleman to Cattleman episode. Well, that does it for our time on this week's edition of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week right here on RFD TV.